right, we're ready to rock and roll. I think we've got a nice cupcake here for you today. Um, we're going to work on interpreting and reading our graphs and talk about which intervals are increasing, which ones are decreasing. We'll even get into topics like where's the relative min, where's the relative max. And while we're at it, we might as well review some other basic characteristics like domain, range, what are the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts while we're at it. So we're going to throw it all in there together. But what are we going to see in this video here? This is a really nice illustration that kind of models a lot of what we're getting into. So we read a graph from left to right. And um, so, for instance, we'd say, OK, we're decreasing along this curve and then we're decreasing again along this portion right here. Um, we kind of flip and we say, OK, we're increasing over this interval. We're increasing over this interval right here. And when we go to describe those intervals in a few minutes, we're going to use the x coordinates. Like, let's just pretend. Uh, just uh, let's pretend that that's a closed dot there, and that's a closed dot there, so we don't have these arrows going to infinity. And then we'd say the we're decreasing from this x value until this x value, and then again from this x coordinate to this x coordinate here. And then we could say, well, we're actually then we're increasing from this x coordinate to this x coordinate, and then again from this on to this one. And also it gives you a nice illustration of what the relative mins and the relative maxes are. We've got a relative min right here because the function just changed from decreasing to increasing. And then we've got a relative max or what we call local max right up here where the function changes from increasing to decreasing. So those are specific points. So that's what we're kind of heading towards. So let's talk about increasing and this will be the most overwhelming thing. I think this, this is like the real formal textbook definition and I think if anything else like being able to interpret textbook notation is a skill in and of itself that will become valuable throughout your college career and so basically you may have to read this three four eight times to try to make any sense of it but um, so they said um, we've got a function that's increasing on an open interval like an open interval is basically we'll say from point a to point b okay for and then for any random x1 and x2 those are just two random x coordinates let's say this is x1 let's say this is x2 where x sub 1 is less than x sub 2 what does that mean basically we're saying x1 lies to the left of x sub 2 okay that fits our, our diagrams okay with that then if f of x sub 1 is smaller or less than f of x sub 2 then we're in business so we got here's your f of x sub 1 Let's see if we can label that. All right. And then this bear right here, just a little bit higher, is going to be your f of x sub 2. So, yep, we're increasing. As long as f sub f of x sub 1 is smaller than f of x sub 2, then we're, inc then we're increasing. And you can see that this is a really nice illustration of a function that's increasing throughout its entire interval. Now, if you can sort your way through that and say, you know what, I, okay, I think I buy it, then this one's going to really follow suit really nicely. Um, let's see if I can change my pen size. That may help my cause a little bit here. Okay, so again, we've got this, this random x sub 1 and this random x sub 2 where x sub 1 is smaller or sits to the left of x sub 2. So let's just say for argument's sake, here's my x sub 1, here's my x sub 2. We just pick two random points, all right? And what you'll notice is right here on the y-axis is your f of x sub 1. And then over here is your f of x sub 2. And as long as f of x sub 1 is greater than f of x sub 2, the function is said to be decreasing. And again, this is a really nice illustration of a function that is strictly decreasing on this open interval. Okay, so I think that was, you know, besides the, the obnoxious formal definitions, at least the, the illustrations are, are pretty intuitive, you know. We're just going from left to right, either going up or going down, all that type of stuff. So we're going to work off of this really nice fun graph. Uh, we've got a closed interval from negative 5 to 6 on the x-axis. And just to give us some perspective, let's say that this y-axis goes as high as 10 right there. And we'll say as low as negative 10 right there, just to give us some perspective. So in what interval is f increasing? So I'm going to say f's increasing starting with x equals negative 5 
up until x equals negative 1. That's the first interval. And then we have the second interval that starts at 3 and continues until we hit 6. So watch how I put this all together. We're increasing from negative 5 to negative 1. So that's my what we like to call my interval notation. Union 3 to 6. So those are, again, those we're using strictly x coordinates to describe when the interval starts and stops, and we had to list two separate intervals, okay? Now let's talk about decreasing. When are we decreasing? So we're going to de start, the decreasing starts at negative 1 and continues until we hit 3. So putting that all together, we'll say from negative 1 to 3, and that was the only interval. Okay, where do we have a relative max? Where does the function change from increasing to decreasing? And we'll say that occurs right here at x equals negative 1. The relative min is going to be right here at x equals 3. That's the instantaneous point where the graph changes from decreasing to increasing. All right, we may have to do a little scrolling up and down here. What are all the solutions for f of x equals 0? This is a fancy way of asking you for what are the x-intercepts, okay? And so we can say, okay, I got an x-intercept here, here, and here. So we've got x equals negative 3, x equals 1, x equals 4. Those are the three instantaneous points. How about the next question wants to know any y-intercepts? We're going to have to guess a little bit here, and that's okay. We're going to guess. Yeah, what should we say? I don't know. Is that right around 4? It's, it feels like it's not quite halfway to 10. So I'm just going to guess y equals 4. And you, we could certainly, you know, we don't want to split hairs. We could agree to disagree on that one. As long as you're in that ballpark, we're going to be okay today. Okay, what's, let's talk domain. So I'm thinking, what's the first x value? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so we're said the graph starts at negative 5, and it continues real nice and smooth until x equals 6. So I'm going to say negative 5 to 6, and these do appear to be closed dots. So I'm going to go ahead and use a closed bracket. So we're going negative 5 to 6 because of the closed brackets. Now, if let's just say this endpoint right here was an open circle, then I would have gone parentheses on that negative five. So watch out for any open circles that you may see, but we didn't have that in this case. Uh, next thing we want to do is just kind of approximate the range. And again, we're going to be guessing here a little bit. So I think what I'm going to say, just for simplicity, we'll say this lowest point is y equals negative 10. The highest point is maybe at six. So I'm going to say negative 10 to six, even though it's really hard to tell, it doesn't look like they quite lined up perfect. But again, we're just kind of approximating. There's certainly going to be some wiggle room. So I'm going to go negative 10 and then as high as 6. And then let's see if we can evaluate f of negative 2 and at least determine whether that value is going to produce a positive or a negative output. So let's see. When we're looking at x equals negative 2, which puts me right here, the graph sits right here. So that's anything above the x-axis is going to produce a positive output. So even though we don't know the exact value of f of negative 2, we can certainly say that the answer is going to be positive. All right. Hope you're feeling pretty good. Again, as always, if not, feel free to add some comments, shoot, throw some questions in the comments below, or shoot us an email. And other than that, good luck.